Y'all wanna talk about gay men in the down low? Ask your husband what he's been doing. I'm just saying, there's downloads everywhere. It can be your CEO, it can be your brother, your co-worker. Of course, there's gangbangers who are also gay. <laughs> Apparently, the channel Truly came out with a video called We Grew Up in a Gang But Fell in Love. Looking at the thumbnail, I recognize the two men and they are big on TikTok, so I don't know their names, but we're gonna get into it and learn their story. Are y'all ready to react? Because I am. Let's get it. This is Trino. He fell in love with Adam. People often stereotype the couple. We're not gang rivals, we're lovers. And their cultural backgrounds mean that their relationship hasn't always been plain sailing. You can't live your life expecting people to just fully embrace you all the time. That's just not how life is. That is so funny, first off. Number one, they're Latinos, most likely Mexican, from what I can see. And how they're dressed, I feel like they're based in LA. That's like the Chicano culture. And y'all don't gotta cover those labels on those beers. We know what that is, okay? Let's all stereotype. They're Coronas. <laughs> I can do that though, cause I am Mexican my damn self. So let's see how y'all fell in love. The gay man, it's an embarrassment to the family. Someone said, I would rather you be a drug addict than to be gay. Like there's no bigger crime than that. If you sleep with a man because you love them, then you're gonna go straight to hell. My name is Trino and this is my partner Adam. And people think that we're gang rivals but we're actually lovers. And we've been together for 18 years. 18 years. 18 when years. we first met, when we would go and get an apartment together, we always said that we were cousins. We're Mexican-American, and we're also here in California. There's a Chicano culture. I'm first-generation Mexican. My grandma, she's from Mexico. My mom, she was born here. So I'm like 20th. You're like what, third generation? The Chicano culture, the Mexican culture, the Latino culture, it's just going- So I'm first-generation American. My parents were born and raised in Mexico. They came here when they were young. But they're about to speak in the Chicano culture, so let's hear it. And especially us being boys. Growing up in a neighborhood where there's gang related, you know, it became part of our culture for us to survive. I think that your mom, definitely my mom, how we're making our families look, the, the shame, you know? When I first came out to my mom, um, she told me- It's crazy because um, I grew up with family members who were also in the gang. It ranges from Latin Kings, Sureños, or 13s, what you call them, Raza. Now, if y'all heard about what happened at my wedding, if there was a brawl between my family and my ex-wife's family. It actually stemmed from gang rivalry. A brother-in-law on my side and a cousin from hers. So it was, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. I never agreed with that type of lifestyle since when I was a kid and I still don't till this day. But in the Latin culture, it's big. And it's the same, and it's the same in the black culture, you know, like, and it's sad because it's usually a minority versus minority and it's the dumbest thing ever. Fighting over colors you don't even own. You know, and as gay men, not only are you frowned upon because you're Latino and you, you're supposed to be the man of the house and take care of a woman and be macho but you're also in a gang where you're amongst other men who are super macho <laughs> so you're really going against the grain it's crazy I don't have a son anymore I have nothing but daughters you know the gay man is an embarrassment to the family I knew this since I was young like when I met you someone said I would rather you be a drug addict than to be gay you know yeah it's like the bottom of the barrel for some people it just feels like there's no bigger crime than that you know yeah. it's like you can go and you can cheat on your wife and you can go and beat people up on the daily but mm -hmm. if you sleep with a man because you love them then you're gonna go straight to hell it's so sad but they're showing the cross and that's what it is it's also because of religious reasons most of us are catholic some of us are christian how they interpret the bible as being gay is a sin my sister brenda she's always been really protective i'm excited but i'm nervous to see what she's gonna say to hear her talk about how she felt back then she's definitely had a lot of different emotions when i came out you know my sister's a really honest person i think it's also healthy to hear her point of view well, it is I thought they were just good friends. Hey. Hey. My husband told me, I think they're together. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, why would you say that? I'm so excited you came. Yeah. We were younger. Some family members can tell right away, but some are in denial and don't want to believe it. We didn't really talk about it that much. Sabrina, why were you concerned about Thrino being with, being gay? Well, him being treated different, especially in the family, because you know in our culture, it could be a little bit like, what? And it wasn't because I was going to love you less. I was just 
I feel like it could be a tough life, you know, yeah. they could mm -hmm. define you. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, no, he's not gay. I understand <laughs> what you're saying because I feel like there's times, a lot of times we go to events and, and we always were like, this could be the day, you know, that we're going to. He's got the crown on him, so I believe he was a Latin king. Um, I don't know what his partner was. Someone that's not always going to fill us, you know? Yeah. It's always a thought in our mind, but it's, we're never going to let it define who we are. You relate to me without you not being a gay man. We relate too much to struggles, our relationships, life, point of view. I just love the fact that you've never changed with us. You've always made us feel like we're just normal people, like, you know? We're I'm normal. normal. <laughs> I'm normal. There's no such thing as normal. This is Trino's part of the clothing, you know? <laughs> I like to just stay like with, you know, just things I'm comfortable with, you know, things that look cool. There's a brand here. Oh, sorry. And I love it because it's definitely giving cholita, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like bandanas is very like a cholo thing. Right. It's a very classic shirt. You know, especially yeah. in the Y'all gotta really go to LA and really embrace that Chicano culture. I grew up in Chicago, so there's not that much of it there. I mean, of course, a lot of Mexican Americans there, but we don't really embrace that culture like that. But when I lived in LA for a, for almost a year, man, the lifestyle is crazy. And I mean it in a good way. If y'all want to, you can go ahead and click onto that video. It's actually a vlog of mine where I give you a little taste of the Chicano culture in LA. Check it out, y'all. When we wear the shirt, we're trying to be cholos. That's what they say. <laughs> so what That's their TikToks. Guys? A cholita is like a, a gangster, you know, it's a, it's a girl gang member. They wear the makeup a certain way, they feather their hair back, they're, they're part of gangs, you know. And it's the girl version of a cholo. A cholo is the boy gangster. And it's because, you know, you're, you're gay. And basically you're saying that we're males, you know? but we're basically females. They're degrading our, our sexuality, our manhood because we're gay, but we're having an image. When in reality, this is not an image to us. It's just clothes. Yeah, they make it seem like you can't wear certain things. Like it's a uniform. In the Chicano culture, it's a, the, it's a, it's a gang, you know? And I understand it, and I don't do it to disrespect nobody. If it bothers people, that doesn't seem to be my problem, you know? Some people are like, oh, you guys are trying to act like you're trolls. You're trying to act like you're hard. You're trying to act like something you're not. This is all I know how to be. People want us to be a certain way. They just can't understand that, you know, gay guys come from the hood. Right. And I'm not afraid to, to show it and to embrace They're it. everywhere. Some are in the closet still. They haven't came out, but they're everywhere. Sometimes people will say like, you know, it's okay to be gay, but just dress like you're gay. Like, Where you're how do you wear your uniform? Yeah, how do you dress <laughs> like you're gay, you know? Yup, this is it. Growing up, I just decided to wear the armor. So I had this demeanor of me, like I don't give a f you know what I mean? I walked to a room, they just knew not to f with me. Oh, they just remember this time? I look good. It's <laughs> alright. <laughs> they give me my curly hair. <laughs> this is one of the first pictures we ever took together. It was in the beginning, and I was I just remember feeling so in love. Growing up, the place that we lived at, like, you don't wear red. That was something that would never be in my closet. Something that was red. programmed. <laughs> but now, like, as an adult, like, I feel like, yeah, well, I embrace the, the color red. And red looks really good on me. It does look good. <laughs> the thing is, with the whole gang thing, it's like, they don't have nothing, but they only have their neighborhood. So they don't have nothing going but this. So I'm going to protect this. We get a lot of comments on TikTok. It's that, and also the fact that they don't have a male figure around. Mom is always working, or they come from drug abuse and a abuse in the home. So these men and women, they get, they get together and they become a family of their own. Uh, basically on social media about how we look. So sad, sad. Where did it first happen for you both? YA or LA County? A lot of people think that we met in, in prison. There's this one <laughs> comment, it says, I remember these fools from the Pinta, that's prison. I've never been in prison. That is so He's funny. I, never, I don't even have a record. It made us strongest as a couple when all we have is each other, you know? If they've never been in prison and they got no record, that means they're the best criminals out there. Because if you've been a criminal most of your life and you've never gotten caught, you're a true criminal right there. We depend on each other. Like, if he's fighting, I'm fighting. It's kind of normal for me because I always like grew up with two gay dads. With Adam, he's been in my life since I was two, so I really only remember just him being my dad, not my stepdad. Aww, but I kept it so cute. very private when it came to my dads. If someone asked and I felt comfortable enough, I would tell them. But I just knew, I think at a really young age, that people are very judgmental, especially with gay parents. And I think at the time, right. I don't think it was as accepting as it is now. Mm -hmm. I always had like a really good childhood. I feel like they always did their best to like make it fun and interesting. I don't think they ever told me that they were gay. Like, like it's just something. Yeah, it's super sad that we 
that people feel the need that they have to announce that they're gay. Like, you got to get the family together and let them know that you're coming out of the closet. It's the stupidest thing ever. These straight, these straight people don't got to do that. Why do we have to? It's sad, but I had to do that, you know? But nowadays, don't make announcements. When your brother or your sister brings their partners around, they don't give an announcement to say that they're straight first and then bring their partner around. Like, like, come on, you guys, it's time to change for the better. Like naturally, I just always knew when I was little. A lot of people would ask, oh, so where's your mom? And I don't, honestly, I don't really remember what I used to say, but like if I felt comfortable enough, I would just tell them. It was just very private. She's like, still private. <laughs> it's just her personality. It was mostly them that experienced all that judgment. And it was hard to watch because it's like these people are just assuming a lot. Judge them based on how they looked. They're covered in tattoos. <laughs> the way they dress, I think they just assume like they're you know, part of a gang or something. They're like <laughs> in the hood, like <laughs> doing bad things. The misconceptions I feel was that being gay parents, you're going to raise a gay So I'm confused though. Didn't they say they grew up in the gang lifestyle? I mean, he's got a whole crown on his neck. And the title even says, we grew up in a gang. So I think what their daughter is saying is, presently, people assume that they're gang bangers. And they're probably out of that lifestyle. Probably it's been a while, too. They've been together for 18 years, y'all. Yeah. And I think a lot of people also think that she was going to need some intense therapy because of the confusion. And our baby shows us that she's so strong. She's so strong-minded. She's so aware of who she is. Mm -hmm. And she she's seems so like focused. It. And she's just definitely like the best part of us. Mm -hmm. She reminds us that us raising her with love and protection and honesty is the best recipe, you know? So do that to your kids. <laughs> oh my God. We're just family, whatever you call that. It's cousin, homies, brothers. Do you guys understand I love why it. I was concerned in the beginning? Like, I know that I said I was mad, but I feel like I could have helped you come out, but we didn't talk about our feelings. And, mm -hmm. and I go back and I think, was it something I could have helped you? Like, you know how I am now? <laughs> what could I do to help you come out to mom and dad? Yeah. Or to anybody, you know? I'm proud of you because you did. Your, you found it. your own strength yeah. and you did it. You dealt with it in a way that you never made me feel alone. You know what I'm saying? Well, and I it was so new and it was something you had to learn how to deal with, you know? Yeah. So I get it. You have been such a defined of our journey and you've seen us not maybe embrace ourselves and you've never made us look judged <laughs> no he definitely is my safe place thank you for loving us brenda i just looked at his crown again just to be sure and yeah there's five points to him so Bye. Oh, i love you so much we weren't honest with ourselves our life hasn't been perfect our relationship's not perfect but that's what makes us right now so for us to really live our life very transparent it feels amazing so the, the recipe is just live your truth, you know? People see us and they think a certain way, but you know what, for us, we, we really give our hearts. You guys were like the missing pieces to my puzzle, and my puzzle is finally been completed. Thank you, Bobby, for having my back and loving me when I felt like I was on love myself. Aww. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> love, don't judge. I love that for them. I just am happy that these two came out and have been together for 18 years, raised a child, and they're living their happiest life. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe, and please share my channel. All right, y'all, see y'all in the next video. Peace.